Jesus came for sinners. Jesus died for sinners. He died for the people that don't do the right things. He also died for those that want to do the right things, but they find themselves unable to. And he came for those that don't even want to think about doing the right things. And he died for those two people too. Jesus Christ died for sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the Bible says in Romans 5, 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus didn't wait for us to get sin out of our lives. He didn't wait for us to be strong. Nor do the right thing. Jesus Christ died for us knowing that we didn't have the strength to do the right things, to not sin, nor to pay for our own sins, you know. Um, in Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is love. Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. And For some people who think that what Jesus did wasn't enough. It's so sad. Um, I recall in Is either in First or Second Corinthians, or Paul, you know, had a some sort of problem with his flesh, and he wanted God to fix that. And God's reply was, "My grace is sufficient." And, you know, the, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so many people want their flesh to be pure and great and all this thing and you know no we need, we need the grace of God and God's grace is sufficient we don't have to work our ways to our way to heaven the bible talks about how in you know in 
in John 5, in 1 John 5, verse 13, that we can know the way of eternal life. And you know, if you're trusting in yourself, you won't ever know if you have eternal life. Because if you're trusting in yourself deep down, you know you don't have the works and you're always going to doubt whether you do. Um, but if we know that we can have God's grace and we know that Jesus Christ died on the cross, we know that he was God manifested in the flesh, we know that the Bible talks about him being the propitiation for our sins. Not our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. He's the atonement. He was the offering. He's the satisfaction for our sins. He's the Lamb of God. And... We're saved by grace through faith. And you know, it's... If it was... If going to heaven was based on our own merit... Lots of people would brag, but nobody would go. <laughs> you know? Um... Our works aren't impressive at all. I mean, and if you think it is, it's because you lowered the bar to such a pathetic degree. That it's so low just so that you could crawl over it. <laughs> you know, but... The, the the real bar is the righteousness of God. And we, we come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we all deserve hell. But God loves us. He doesn't want us to go to hell. And if one sin is enough to send us to hell without Jesus Christ... then one offering is enough to, to, to make us not go there. And that, that was Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Right? Because God's fair. You know, God knows we're, we're corrupted and, and we're, we're sinful and our flesh dwell of no good thing. And it's actually very easy for us to go to hell. You know, obviously without Christ. Because, again, one sin is enough to send us to hell. So if God wants to be fair, and, you know, God's a just God, um, and he, he knows it's, it's ridiculously easy for us to sin and for, for us to go to hell without Christ, so he had to make it ridiculously easy for us to be saved and some people want to mock so called easy believism but uh, if doing anything hard was required for us to be saved then we would burn <laughs> because compared to God we can't even handle you know, in, in in his eyes, what would be really small things, you know. And, I mean, we, we can't even control our thoughts for a full day, you know. <laughs> the 
Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. And we all think of stupid stuff, you know. And knowing that Jesus Christ never had a foolish thought. makes me remember how small I am compared to him you know and but man to know that the the God was manifested in the flesh and condescended to his own creation and allowed his own creation to brutalize him humiliate him embarrass him it was like the most humil it was the most humiliating thing in the history of the world. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Where the creatures crucified the creator. He suffered all that humiliation, that pain, that agony. Because he didn't want us to go to hell. Because he, he wants to pay for our sins. And if we believe that he did it, you know, we'll be saved. Because he did it. It's paid in full. You know? And you still want to trust in yourself? What could you really offer God? You know, God doesn't need money. He doesn't need things. He made the world, you know. Like, what could you possibly offer him? That's why we need the blood of Christ. Something that matches his holiness is the blood of Christ. We cannot match His holiness. We come short of the glory of God for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's a gift. Salvation is a gift. We do not earn a gift. We do not work for a gift. It's God. God's the one giving the gift. And God's not a liar. And God's not a thief. He's not going to promise you something give it to you and and steal it from you later or take it away from you later when he when he promised that it's something eternal it'll last forever god's not about the bait and switch he's about goodness love and righteousness He's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come through repentance. He wants everybody to acknowledge the truth that they need a Savior, that it's Jesus Christ, that, you know, it, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Mo most people, I've he heard the term, Jesus Christ died for my sins. But most people don't understand what, what that means. And the reason he died for our sins. The reason he died for our sins. Is because our sins would send us to hell. And. You know. That insults a lot of people. You know. A lot of people think yeah. Maybe the guy across the street, you know, deserves to go to hell, but I don't, you know, and people think, yeah, maybe that murderer in, in the maximum security prison, you know, deserves to go to hell or that guy in death row, man, maybe he deserves to go to hell. He murdered ten, like 10 people, but all liars, you know, really, or 
ad adulterers or, or an idolater or something. Like, yeah. Because that's how holy God is. But you know what? The blood of Jesus Christ is greater than your sin. And Jesus Christ came to redeem us from the curse of the law. And he came to save our souls. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If we add to that, it's not good news. If we add to that, you know, it ceases to be of God and, and, it, and it starts to become a, about us and what we do. You know, if you're trusting, you know, in yourself, you're not trusting in Christ. If you're trusting in a water baptism, you're not trusting in Jesus Christ. If you're trusting in uh, how you behave, well, that's about you. That's not about what Jesus did, you know. Um, if you're trusting in in trying to stop sinning, uh you already failed because you've already sinned, you know, and you're going to continue to sin, unfortunately, you know, until the day you die uh, because you have a sin nature that you inherited from Adam. And, you know, even think about children, you know, like parents, uh, parents teach, teach their children, you know, that how, how to eat with a, with a knife and a fork they help them walk, learn how to walk. They potty train them. But don't they don't teach their kids to lie. And every child lies. Because it's in their nature. Their sin nature. And uh, again, I just want to end this video with... Romans 5, 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That question appears in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. And in verse 31, the answer is, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thine house. Believe means to trust, to put your faith in, right? Just how um, you, you know, you, uh, you might sit in a chair and trust that the legs aren't going to snap on the, on the chair. Um, you just simply trust Christ. You know, and, you know, if you're sitting on a chair, you're sitting on a chair. It has nothing to do with your um, behavior, wh wh whether you're, you know, you're, you're being nice to people or you're like, you know, thanking that chair or anything like that. And of course, you know, if you, if you get saved, you, sh you should be thankful to God, right? But for some crazy reason, you're not. But, but you got saved. You're, you're, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Jesus Christ cannot deny himself when he promises something, uh, you know, You know, you, you have his word for it, right? And if he promises eternal life and he says that uh, no man can pluck, pluck you out of his hand, he's, he's not lying. And um, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God 
didn't give you to save yourself. He gave the world Jesus Christ. And while we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus.